I'm trying a little bit of a different setup. I got a new lens for my camera. The only problem is, I think I got the wrong one. So although it is very good quality, it's across the room. <laughs> like I think, I think I've bought the wrong camera lens because you are, you are, you are far away. Check that shit. You are very far away. You are very far away. Um, think. <laughs> I think it might be too late to get it refunded as well. <laughs> Fuck! As some of you may already have seen, the BBC decided to do a documentary on me and also the Nazi pug video because some people, even three years later, still will not let a dead meme stay dead. But filming the documentary was a lot of fun because not only is it very meme worthy, but it caused all of the usual suspects to screech into the heavens for weeks. And it was glorious. But before we get into it, Thank you very much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. I have all the time in the world for VPNs because they're very pro internet freedom and internet privacy. NordVPN has over 5,200 servers in over 60 countries. It is hella fast and it also has absolutely no data logging. NordVPN allows you to bypass internet censorship if you're living in places like China and Saudi Arabia. It can also help you bypass the internet censorship caused by Article 13. Also, you can access content that's not available in your country. For example, the documentary that this video is about, you can only access it on the BBC website if you're from the UK. But with NordVPN, you can fix that. It has double encryption to increase internet anonymity and it also has unlimited bandwidth. You can get 75% off, that's only $2.99 a month, plus you get an additional month free if you use my link at nordvpn.com slash countdankula. You guys clicking these links really helps me out, so go to nordvpn.com forward slash countdankula because screw internet censorship. It's pretty much a dying town, like after all the, uh, the coal mines and the ironworks and everything shut down, like uh, a lot of people just started leaving. You know, there's not really much in the way jobs and employment or anything like that. I just want to clear something up. Uh, those energy drinks weren't mine. Um, the BBC brought me them, I think, as a gift or a peace offering. I think they thought to themselves, what type of gift do you bring a gamer? And the, the best thing they could come up with was energy drinks. I don't think it was remotely a joke. I think it was a framing device for someone to be nasty. But do you think it was anti-Semitic? I think it was anti-Semitic, yeah, I think... Uh, I think it was a dog whistle. Oh, Steve, Steve, Steve. This was by far my favourite part of the documentary to film. The BBC somehow managed to find my Twitter mentions personified as a person and put me in the same room with him. I loved every fucking second of it. Right, man. Now, see that cut there? That isn't actually how Steve entered the room. When he went into the room, I decided to be a man and I decided to be friendly and I put my hand out and went to shake his hand. And Steve decided to be the mature one and said, I'm not shaking your fucking hand and just sat down. Whew! Rude! The Scottish Criminal Intelligence fucking division went through everything. All of my inf emails, absolutely everything. They found fuck. All, all they went on was what you're doing now, where we've got no evidence whatsoever of what this guy's politics actually are, but we think he's a you Nazi. I, I think you're a Nazi. That's great. I think, I think you're a prick. Let's take five minutes. It's all right? Sure. Okay. Stephen had to go outside and calm down because I got his panties in a bunch because he was slowly starting to realise that the you are a Nazi argument uh, isn't as effective in the real world as it is on Twitter. So we had to go outside and take five minutes to listen to his mindfulness meditation tapes, calm down and come back in. And when Steve came back in after his little five minute break to calm himself down, he starts giving off this huge long-winded apology, apologising for making fun of my accent. I tried several times to cut him off telling him no apology was necessary. 
I really don't give the tiniest shit that you made fun of my accent, but he kept insisting that I let him finish his apology, so I sat there and let him finish his apology, and while he was apologising, he says that he was apologising because he felt that making fun of the Scottish accent was him punching down. So Steve obviously considers his mighty Anglo self to be on a much higher level than we filthy Celtic pagan hill tribes. So much so that he feels that making fun of us, you know, by making fun of our accent, is him punching down. Because, you know, we are, we are absolutely inferior to Steve. But along with some absolute memes, we did get some absolute cringe. And some of the best cringe came from the footage of the Quantum Leopard Comedy Club. So, uh, Quantum Leopard is a lovely night. Um, it is uh, an award-winning, uh, kind of lefty, no-kicking-down, lovely, fluffy Saturday night out uh, at the comedy in London. Basically, it's very heavily controlled comedy where only certain people are allowed to take part and what they're allowed to say on stage is heavily restricted. It's, it's comedy communism. That's what it is. It's essentially comedy communism where you're only allowed to go on stage and speak if you agree with the state and you're only allowed to say things that the state agrees with. And if you dare veer off this path, then you're off to the comedy gulag. Content policy, uh, uh, please, uh, no racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, no chat bashing, no ableism, no whorephobia, and uh, no picking on the audience, no uh, rape as a punchline. Um, rape is not a punchline, it is a line for which you should be punched. Fantastic. Even, e even more rules, because everybody knows that comedy is so much better when it's controlled by a lot of rules. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Rape jokes are funny. I also absolutely love the fact that audience interaction is based on a consent system. If any of you are doing anything that's like crowd work, audience interaction, etc., um, please only do it with people who are in the front row and who are wearing a green sticker. If they're wearing a green sticker, it means they have actively consented to being talked to. Um, if they're not wearing a green sticker, it means they have not. Cool. You're only allowed to interact with the audience if they give you consent. Are we, are we going to get a hashtag Me Too movement because a comedian spoke to someone? You can discuss race, right? Say again? Yeah, yeah, totally fine. Like, the, the dividing line is like, um... This is that. Say again? Yeah, that's it. Like, that's basically it. Like, you, it's just, you know, treat the material with respect. You know what I mean? Like, your experiences of, I'm guessing, anti-Semitism, totally fine. Your experiences of being a proud black man, mm, less so. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of where we are. So, all good? Make sense? Yeah, cool. It's just like, it's just common fucking sense. Like, please don't be a bellend. Joe Jacobs' face, man. <laughs> just, just look at Joe's face. That, that is the face of a man whose entire act has been fucked up by stupid rules. Is this code of conduct going to affect your set? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Joe was on the same night I was on at Comedy Unleashed, and he was extremely funny, and I'm willing to bet he performed a lot better at Comedy Unleashed than he did at Quantum Leopard. Because at Comedy Unleashed he was, you know, actually allowed to do his set. Um, similarly, racism, homophobia, transphobia, all of this sort of thing. Like, it's, it's also, it's just, it's lazy, it's hack, it picks lazy victims, and it's not interesting. Like, we've all seen it, that's been done to death. That is a very interesting point, Weird Al Communist, because a lot of people actually do enjoy edgy comedy. We even still have some edgy comedians on TV, still there, just hanging in there, just, just barely. But maybe you're right. Maybe a lot of the jokes that I make aren't really the pinnacle of comedy. There we go, that is... That is... Jesus Christ, that's good. That is probably the funniest joke that I have ever heard in my entire life. Now, why didn't I, or a four-year-old child, think of that one? Now that, that gentleman, is the pinnacle of comedy. That is probably the funniest joke that has ever been told. I'm going to steal it. I'm going to do that joke in my own act. I am going to make so much money. <laughs> okay. People say like, oh, well, you can't do racist jokes, homophobia, you can't cover, do racism, homophobia, transphobia, all of this sort of stuff. Like, well, what is there left with? Like, what kind of life do you lead? One that's actually funny 
See, if you actually watch my stand-up, you'll notice that not all of my jokes are edgy. I tell a joke if I think it's funny. I don't actively go out of my way to make my comedy edgy. Although, I won't lie, the edgy stuff gets the biggest laugh. Also, the type of life I lead is a lot more fun than a comedy club that requires consent badges. This is my consent badge. And this is a special type of consent badge. This badge means that I don't need to get consent. So see if I'm approaching you, and I have this badge on, you better run, because this gorilla dick daddy hungry. Another funny thing is uh, when Weird Al Communist was asked if he wanted to meet with me in person so that we could have a discussion, or if I personally could go to the Quantum Leopard comedy night to experience it for myself, uh, he refused, because uh, he's a pussy that won't be able to defend his ideas. He has no idea how much of a dick he is. Yes, I do. So on the, on the final round of teething, just like, how many teeth has this fucking child got? You know what I mean? I've got a feeling that baby looks nothing like him. So I'm struggling to understand the reticence to engage. I'm not gonna debate with him about why fascism is bad. That's fantastic, Weird Al Communist, because that debate would actually never happen, because never in my life have I said that fascism is a good thing. <gasps> oh, we agree on something. You, Mr. Weird Al Communist, agree with me, Count Ankula, great big bad Nazi fascist boy. <sighs> Wait until your friends find out. Oh, you're fucked. You're fucked, you're already, you're gonna get banned off Twitter, you're gonna, you're gonna lose your job, you're gonna lose your club, everyone's gonna stop talking to you, oh no, oh no, just wait until everyone finds out that you agree with a Nazi on something. I'm starting to get the feeling that this guy, like all the others, gets all of his information from the Guardian, lefty Twitter, and people who have a penchant for lying and using hyperbole to make their arguments more effective. So basically, he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Have you seen the video? <laughs> I genuinely, I have not seen the Nazi bug video. So let me get this straight. You have chosen to appear in this documentary. The documentary that is discussing whether or not the Nazi pug video was a joke or hate, discussing whether or not the video should have been a crime, and discussing the video's effects on comedy. I mean, the documentary is literally titled Nazi pug joke or hate. The documentary is about the video. The video is the purpose and focal point of the documentary. I mean, the video is literally the reason that the documentary was made. And you have chosen to appear in a documentary about the video to provide your commentary on the video when you haven't even seen the fucking video. Hello ladies and gentlemen and thank you for joining us for another episode of Cinema Review. Today we are joined in studio by a very special guest, Shanti McGunter. Shanti, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much for inviting me, it's great to be here. And today we are going to be discussing Quentin Tarantino's timeless cult classic, Reservoir Dogs. Uh, Mr Shanti, have you seen Reservoir Dogs? No. So thank you for letting us know that we can throw out absolutely everything that you have said about me and about the video because I mean, if you will star in a documentary about a video and not even watch the video that that documentary is about, I think it's safe to say that you do absolutely no research whatsoever. So thank you for letting us know that everything that you had to say in the documentary was absolutely worthless, but hey, at least, at least you got some PR for Quantum Leopard. <laughs> but seriously though, don't, don't brigade the guy, don't brigade Quantum Leopard. They have absolutely every right to host their comedy show in any way that they see fit. Even if it is kind of boring. Do you wanna, do you wanna guess the Jews, Trotsky? Do you wanna, do you wanna guess the Jews? No? No response, because he's well brought up, this cat. Are you serious? Are you, are you fucking serious, Mr. Mr. Weird Al Communist? 
Mr. I didn't watch the fucking video. Because see, see if you'd actually bothered to, you know, take the five minutes to watch the video that the documentary you're featuring in is about, then you would know that you just did exactly what I did in my video. So congratulations, you Nazi fascist, bigot, racist, Genji main. Congratulations. Welcome to the fold, brother. And of course, of course his cat's called fucking Trotsky. A job. I save that for Sun reporters, babe. They're all jobs. But you're a job because you're not because you did the thing. I always knew you were a spy. So no, but if the man did the thing, then he must be a job. He is a job. In fact, he? you're right. Flawless logic. Flawless logic. Sun science. This is all your fault. I mean, I just made one video. I didn't name my dog Adolf or anything like that. But I mean, if you want to. Name your cat after someone who pioneered an ideology that murdered millions of people? Well, it's your cat. Or is it everyone's cat? Communism's weird. I don't know if you're Jewish or if you have Jewish family. I mean, I... I always... Had, they're all dead now, partly a result of mates of this cunt. Ah, uh, yeah. How silly of me. I, I completely forgot that I'm best friends with... Hitler, Goering, Goebbels and Rommel. Uh, we, we play League of Legends together and then every Tuesday we also play Five Asides. Uh, not Rommel anymore though. Apparently there was some disagreement about a briefcase and he got kicked off the team. I, I, I don't know. I, I try and stay out of drama. What I see of him now is somebody who is a free speech advocate, which like any idiot now knows is like code for men's rights activist alt-right bullshit. <sighs> Sorry, sorry guys, just that, that hot take gave me third degree burns. I could do that right now. What difference would it make to my public perception? None. Well, I guess... people already think that. Well, it depends. So why, why don't I just come out with it then and then spread my views? Because no, one, because no one who's a Nazi recognises they're a Nazi. How? No one who's racist is, thinks they're racist. That's, that's absolutely true. See, see these guys here? No idea. They have, they have absolutely no idea that they are Nazis, and they, they, these ones as well, you know, they're, they're just these poor, poor, clueless, misguided souls. They, they have absolutely no idea that they are Nazis. This guy, th this guy too, um, he actually pretty much invented Nazism, started the Nazi party and also created a Nazi state. He had, he was none the wiser. He was absolutely none the wiser. He had absolutely no idea that he was a Nazi. The funny thing is here is Steve with his, you know, skinhead and leather jacket is the only one in that room who actually looks like a Nazi. You are not a victim. <laughs> How oh, many? You me. need to get the fucking chip off your shoulder. Said the really salty guy because he lost a debate. Also, very nice shot. I love the Ramones. I'm pretty sure one of their biggest hits is a song called Blitzkrieg Bop. Also, the Ramones would want to slap you if they could hear the stuff coming out of your mouth. If someone watches your video and that causes them to go out and commit a, a violent offence, okay. are you responsible for that? No, because people have agency. Same as you saying that you think I'm lying and I secretly have Nazi views. What if somebody watches this documentary, sees you saying that, believes you, and I get the shit kicked out of me in the street? Is that your fault? No, I think it's your fault for making a video <laughs> with a fucking pug. Uh, you know yeah, how many? Yeah. So know, in other, in other right, words, I, know, I, I deserve it. No, I'm not saying no, 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 no. It's okay when I do it. Steve spent the entire debate accusing me of being a Nazi, accusing me of spreading Nazi views, etc., etc., and all of this was things that he just dreamed up in his own head. He was basically taking my words, my actions, and converting them and interpreting them in a way that would suit his own narrative. He was basically saying to me, these are the thoughts I believe are in your head, and I am going to judge you based on the things that I have dreamed up in my own mind, all of which were completely, obviously, bad faith. That was his entire argument. He was basically making up the thoughts that were in my head at the time and when I did the Nazi pug video and forming all of his arguments based on his assumptions, all of which had absolutely no evidence. They just existed in the little fairy land that Steve likes to call his mind. So when Steve turned around to me and said that I was making stuff up, I, I lost it. 
I couldn't, I couldn't hold it back anymore and I just started laughing. Steve got very, very upset that he did so badly in the debate that he decided to storm off. You have just victimised yourself again. In other words, in other words, you're saying I deserve it. You're fucking making shit up. Poor me, I can't be a cunt in the street. Poor me, I can't be anti-Semitic. Poor me, I can't... I think I'm done. I think we're done. I think we're absolutely done. The cherry on top of the entire debate was Steve's parting words, which he said with no sense of irony or self-awareness. You do not realise uh, how nasty mm -hmm. you yeah. are. Yeah, okay. Because no one evil recognises their evil. They certainly don't, mate. They certainly don't. So Steve, the man who's trying to gatekeep comedy, the man who is quite happy to go on TV and maliciously lie about a person and call them a Nazi, based on bad faith interpretations that he blatantly made up and a man who is quite happy for people to be punished by the government for the things that they say turned around to me and said no one evil recognises that they're evil without even realising he just described himself but maybe we're misjudging Steve let's, let's not do what Steve does and assume what he's really like by you know making up the thoughts that are in his head you know, maybe he just dropped the ball on this argument, and maybe, deep down, Steve actually is a good person. However, this isn't Steve's first appearance on TV. In the UK, we have a TV game show called Golden Balls, and the premise of the game is, you start off with a group of contestants, and they all need to sort of either lie or tell the truth to sort of mislead and play mind games with each other with the purpose of eliminating the other contestants and while this is going on money is being added to a pot which is going to be the grand prize at the end. The final of the game happens when there is only two contestants left and each contestant has two balls in front of them. One of them says split, the other one says steal and the game ends with both of them choosing one ball and opening it at the same time. Now, if both contestants choose the split ball, then they both split the prize money equally. Each person gets half. If both of them choose the steal ball, then they both get nothing. They walk away completely empty-handed. However, if one person chooses split and the other person chooses steal, the person who chose steal gets all of the prize money. And the person that was trying to be nice and chose split gets absolutely nothing. And right before the big reveal, the two contestants have a little chat with each other to sort of reassure the other one, like, oh, I'm a very, very honest person. Don't worry, I'm I'm going to split it with you. I promise I won't steal. And it's basically, it's, it's a very, it's actually quite an interesting look into human nature. You might have seen that very old but very infamous video from Golden Balls of the woman who decided to steal the entire £100,000 pot from a man who really needed the money. Split or steal? Now you might be wondering to yourself why the hell I'm telling you all of this. Well, there is another episode of that show that I would like to make you aware of. And I really would like to make you aware of that particular episode, but unfortunately when I included it in my previous video, someone, not, not sure who, uh, reported it and I got a copyright claim taken on the video and my entire BBC documentary video got taken down so the only thing that I can do is not include the footage but instead describe it to you. Uh, basically uh, Steve himself appeared on an episode of Golden Balls and he made it to the final round and the pot was about £76,000 and it was Steve versus a woman and Steve and the woman went back and forth with each other and Steve was reassuring her, being, saying that he was absolutely 100% going to pick Split. And unfortunately, uh, Steve uh, decided to choose Steel and stole the entire £76,000 prize money from the woman, basically showing that whenever it comes to uh, discussing morals in any way, like Steve was trying to do to me, you know, calling me a bad person and so on, uh, Steve, Steve really can't talk. He really can't talk. So, unfortunately, I've had to uh, record this little bit via webcam and uh, 
put it in the video to replace the Golden Balls footage that got the video taken down. For anyone who's seen it before, it was actually a recorded uh, on a mobile phone on TV. So YouTube's auto-detect system didn't pick it up. Uh, someone would have had to have manually reported it. And I have, have absolutely no idea who might have done that. So unfortunately, I can't include it. I can't include that footage in the video. So I've had to record this little bit, re-upload the entire documentary. Now you can just continue and enjoy the rest of the video. But the certain, you know, the footage in question that I am talking about, oh, it's still out there. It's still out there, Steve. You just need to find it. Overall, I feel the documentary was a very good thing. Purely because there's a lot of people who aren't tuned into this whole culture war thing, for lack of a better term, who still believe what the papers say and think that I am, you know, super ultra mega Hitler. But when they watched the documentary, they seen what I'm really like, and a lot of people realised that they were lied to about me, about what I'm really like and about what my politics really are. And I did get a lot of messages from people saying, okay, I was wrong about you, but you're still a dickhead. <laughs> and that's and that's absolutely fine. <laughs> because, you know, at least it's true. There were people that wanted it shut down. Um, one of the main ones was the media. The media really wanted it shut down because they've got, they have a financial interest in the public believing I'm a Nazi because the papers know that rage and anger sells. They know it sells. They know that it will make people buy papers and it will get them them clicks on their websites and basically I'm, I'm profit. I'm profit for them. So they do have a financial interest in the public at large believing that I am a Nazi. And the documentary kind of shattered that perception a little bit. Oh well. I guess you'll need to find someone else's life to ruin so that you can make fucking money. Another group that wanted it shut down was the usual left-wing screechers. How can you give the- how can you give a platform to this fascist, Nazi, racist bigot? Oh why? You worried? Are you worried that people are going to hear me speak? Because did you know that whenever people at home sitting on their couch hear words from the telly box, they immediately believe everything that they hear. Oh, because, because the average member of the public is in no way capable of critical or rational thinking. If only, if only we had laws that could control the way people think, then we wouldn't need to worry about all these big bad Nazis advocating for things like freedom of speech and equal rights. <laughs> Fucking idiots. There was a lot of really good things that did get cut out. Like, I sat down with two Jewish comedians, Joe Jacobs and Constantine Kissing, and we actually had a really good, constructive, deep dives into comedy. There was no screeching, there was no yelling, there was amicable disagreements, and the conversations were very good and very constructive, and I wish they get kept. I really do wish they get kept, because those were really, really good conversations. But overall, the best thing that the documentary did is expose these left-wing screechers for what they really are. Mindless, blithering idiots that have absolutely nothing intelligent to say and nothing of value to add to the conversation apart from accusations of you are a Nazi. These people contribute absolutely nothing at all to the discourse. They can't form arguments. They just don't like you. They don't like what you're saying. They don't know why they disagree with what you're saying. Otherwise, they would be able to make a coherent argument against it. They just want to shout Nazi at you over and over and over until you go away because they don't want to actually self-reflect and think, maybe my ideas are wrong. No, that can't be right. It's the Nazis that are wrong. But please let it be known that these guys are not a representation of the whole left wing. Believe it or not, these guys are a tiny minority. They just screech the loudest. But the good thing is, is that a lot of people are going to see the way that these screechers act and think, wow, that's cringe, that guy's an idiot, and not want to associate with them. And come over to us, the side of sense, the side of rationality, the side of freedom, the side of freedom of speech, the side of individual liberty, the side of genetically engineered cat girls. So you can shout Nazi all you want, because more and more people are figuring out that that's not true. So there is going to have to come a day where, if you want us to go away, you're going to need to actually start coming up with arguments. I mean, you don't want people thinking we are right now, do you? I had fun. Go on. Did you have fun? 
As a BBC journalist... I um, need to remain completely impartial and not laugh at your jokes because you're a big bad Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> It's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe. <laughs>